so in this example, what we're going to do is build off of the previous one where we were using a switch to change the state of something that we were drawing on screen in P5.js. In that instance, we were just sending a one or a zero. Uh, but with an analog sensor like a potentiometer, we can get a lot more information uh, in our, for, you know, and send that and do some more interesting things. So um, here I've got a, a potentiometer. You can see both the illustration as well as the actual uh, the actual circuit itself. Um, the we've got a potentiometer here. It's got ground uh, on going into one pin. It's got power going into uh, another one, and then the wiper, the center pin, is connected to pin A zero, analog input zero. Uh, so here you can see I've got uh, power, and then I've got ground, and then here this is the pin. This is the wire that's connected to A zero. So. Uh, I'll get this out of the way. And we can see here, this is the Arduino sketch. It's, uh, I've already programmed it onto the microcontroller, so I'll go through that. Uh, but you can see here, it's really essentially the same sketch that we had for the previous example. Differences being that the, uh, I've renamed some of the variables in here. So it's no longer switch pin, but it's now pod pin, and it's connected to A0. Um, so this is, while I'm using a potentiometer, uh, it could be really any analog sensor. So you could use this with like a temperature sensor or a photocell, a uh, flex sensor, an FSR if you're detecting pressure, uh, any of these things would work. So uh, I've got the uh, a, a constant to uh, that's naming the pin that the potentiometer is attached to. There is a variable called potval that's holding the value from the potentiometer. That's going to be a value between 0 and 1023. Inside of the setup, all we need to do is say serial.begin9600. The analog pins are already configured as inputs. Uh, inside of the loop, um, we read the value off of the pot uh, pin and store it into this variable. And then we're going to write the value out to the serial port. And then we just wait for 10 milliseconds between each reading. So this is uh, really the same uh, sketch that we just saw uh, in the previous video. It's just uh, tweaked a little bit to accommodate a potentiometer specifically. So in this particular example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the rotation of the potentiometer. So as I twist the knob here. What I'm going to do inside of my P5 sketch here is I've got a, I'm going to be drawing a square on the screen. And as I turn the potentiometer, it's going to rotate the square as well. So I've mapped the, uh, the, 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 the physical turn to one full rotation on, of, the, of the, uh, the square on screen. So there's a nice one-to-one uh, -one correlation. So if we go and look at the uh, P5 sketch, we'll see once again, inside of the index, I've got, uh, I'm using the CDN for both of these files. This looks the exact same as the previous uh, example. And this uh, particular instance of the, um, the sketch, I cleared out a lot of those uh, callback functions that are helpful utility functions, but uh, you know aren't necessary to the functioning of the sketch. So you'll see that this one is a, has a has a few less functions inside of there, but it still works the exact same. So uh, here I've got a uh, variable to hold the serial uh, object, something to hold the data. Uh, I've got the I call the constructor right here, and I put it inside of the serial variable. Uh, and inside of the setup, you'll see I only have two calls here. One is to serial.open, and then I'm referring to the port that my microcontroller is on. Uh, and then I've got only one callback function that I'm uh, referring to here, and this is that got data function. So this is where I read in the data from the serial buffer and then do something with it. So the entirety of the sketch is really short now. So inside of my got data, 
uh, I'm doing the same sort of thing. I've got a local variable called current string. It reads the content of the serial buffer up until it reaches the new line character. Uh, I trim off any white space. I make sure that I've got a, a valid piece of data inside of there. Uh, I print it out to my console, and then I store that into the uh, global variable latest data. Inside of the draw, I've got uh, you know the typical stuff: background, fill color. Uh, I'm writing out the value to the top corner of the um, uh, of the sketch again, um, so you just so you can have some sort of diagnostic information. Uh, and then in this example, remember we're, when we do an analog read, we're receiving a value between zero and one thousand twenty-three. So what we're going to do is we're going to use that value to determine the degree or the angle at which the square that I'm going to be drawing rotates. So uh, in order to do that first, I need to change the angle mode to degrees. By default in P5.js, it's using radians. Um, and then here I'm saying let I've got this uh, variable uh, for the uh, degree rotation. Uh, and I'm mapping the latest data from the microcontroller, which uh, you'll see right here. I'm saying let uh, my variable equal and then map, and map takes five arguments. The first one is the number that I want to, that I'm reading from that I want to change. In this case, it's latest data. The uh, range in which we might expect values from latest data to come in. So in this case, it's zero to 1,023. And then the range that we want to map the output to. So in, so here, since we're doing degrees and we want a full rotation in our square, we're mapping between zero and 360 degrees. So uh, in order to do this, I'm uh, doing a, I'm calling translate. And so this shifts the center of the drawing coordinates so I can rotate around the center of my, uh, my square. Um, I then call rotate, and so it rotates the canvas. Uh, I'm then saying rect mode center to place the drawing position of the rectangle in the center position. Uh, and then I'm saying that I'm drawing the rectangle uh, at coordinates 0, 0, 100, 100. So it's the center of the rectangle is inside of coordinates 0, 0, and it's 100 pixels on either side. So uh, from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the P5 serial control application again. Right? I've already got my uh, I've already got the the port that I'm communicating on. I've already got that inside of my sketch. So I've got this open. I don't need to do anything else with it. So I'm just going to get this out of the way by minimizing it, and I'm then going to run the sketch. And you can see right here. Um, we've got uh, in the console the values coming out of the potentiometer being printed as well as inside of the uh, window itself, and here's my square. And so I'm going to go here, and as I twist the knob, you can see that the rotation is matching. So here it's all the way over at zero, and as I turn the knob, there's this really satisfying uh, relationship between the position of the knob and the square. So this is how you can use a variable resistor or an analog sensor to, uh, in conjunction with a P5 sketch, to get some uh, some slightly more interesting uh, information into your sketches. So the next video, what we'll do is we'll talk about uh, sending data from P5.js back to an Arduino. And then after that, we'll talk uh, briefly, well, there'll be one more example about how to most efficiently send information back and forth between uh, the two.